Hello, my name's Dan. And my name's Jenna. Um, we're making this video so that hopefully by the end of it, you'll be able to fully interpret an NMR spectrum. So, once you've done a reaction and worked it up, one of the first things that you might do to analyse it is an NMR. Once you've got your spectrum, um, there's a few simple steps that you need to follow. And handily, we've written a checklist. So first of all, you need to draw your reaction scheme. The reaction that we've chosen to look at is the debenzylation of N-benzylthalamide to thalamide. When you draw out your reaction scheme, you need to make sure you include everything that is used in the reaction. So all the solvents and reagents that are used, including the solvents that are used in the workup. So the first things that you can do is look at your starting materials and products and think about what, it, what peaks you might expect to see. So in your starting material, you have four aromatic protons on the left hand side of the molecule. We are going to call these HA. Then you also have five aromatic protons on the right hand side of the molecule. We're going to call these HB. And finally, you have the two aliphatic protons, which we're going to call HC. And then in the product, you've got your four aromatic protons and the hydrogen attached to the nitrogen of the ring. OK, so now looking back at our checklist, we've drawn the reaction scheme and we've predicted what peaks we might want to see. The next step is to rule out any solvent or impurity peaks. There's a big table full of common solvent impurity peaks that might be present in an NMR spectrum. All you need to do to get to it is Google NMR solvent impurities and click on the first link. That will take you to a big PDF with a big table full of numbers to make things a little bit easier, we've printed it out. So looking at the table, the top row has a list of deuterated solvents that you might have run your NMR spectrum in. We run our spectrum in deuterated DMSO. You can see that um, there's a chemical shift for the solvent residual peak, which is a peak uh, caused by the deuterated solvent. Although the solvent is deuterated, and you might not expect to see a peak from it, because of the way that deuterated solvents are made, um, there will usually be a peak there from it. Also because of the way deuterated solvents are made, there will usually be a water peak. So you look at the two chemical shifts, one from the solvent and one from water, and you can rule them out from your spectrum. We also did our reaction in ethanol. So you look at where ethanol is in the table and you can see that the CH3 of ethanol should give a triplet with a chemical shift of 1.06. The CH2 group should give a quartet at 3.44 and the OH group should give a singlet at 4.63. So, looking at our spectrum, we can rule out the peak corresponding to DMSO at 2.5, the peak corresponding to water around 3.3, and our three ethanol peaks. The first, a triplet at around 1, a quartet around 3.4, and a singlet around 4.5. Sometimes it's difficult to get the concentration of your NMR sample right if you haven't had too much practice. Occasionally it can be too weak. If the sample is too weak, you'll see that your solvent peaks are really, really big and you can't really see anything else that's going on in the spectrum. Occasionally, um, you'll make a really strong sample. As you can see here, the product peaks are really broad and really unsymmetrical. To make a sample with the right concentration, you need to use about 15 milligrams in about 
0.7 milliliters of NMR solvent. With this concentration, you can see that the solvent peaks aren't massive, but they're not tiny, and you can clearly see everything else that's going on in the spectrum. As well as that, the peaks from your product are sharp, well-defined, and symmetrical. Looking back at our NMR spectrum, you can see some small peaks that can correspond to other impurities. Sometimes it is useful to do an NMR of your starting material. It's useful to do the NMR of your starting material in the same NMR solvent as you did your original spectrum in. This is so that you can compare the chemical shifts uh, more accurately. You can see in the starting material we have a solvent peak from DMSO and a solvent peak from water and then we can crudely assign the rest of the peaks and we can see that we have nine aromatic protons and two aliphatic protons. So comparing the starting material NMR spectrum with our NMR spectrum you can see that some of our small impurities come from the starting material. You can see that aliphatic protons from our starting material here and some of the aromatic protons here. Looking back at our checklist, we've ruled out our solvent and impurity peaks. Now it's time to measure our integrals. The easiest way to measure your integrals is to draw a straight line at the top and the bottom of your integrals and then measure the distance between the two in millimetres. Looking at the heights of the two peaks, we can see that we've got a 1 to 4 ratio. So now we can assign the peak on the left to the hydrogen attached to the nitrogen of the ring and the large peak on the right corresponding to four protons to the aromatic protons of the product. Looking back at our che checklist, we can now say that we've measured our integrals and we've assigned our peaks. The last thing to do is to calculate the purity of your sample by comparing the ratios of impurities and product in your NMR sample. The way to do this is to measure the integral of an assignable impurity peak. We chose the benzylic peak as it's far away from the aromatic region and we know that it corresponds to two protons. The height of this integral is four millimetres. That corresponds to two protons. So now we can work out that one proton corresponds to two millimetres. To work out the percentage conversion, you take the sum of the height of one proton from each compound, so starting material and product in this case, and calculate a ratio as a percentage. So in this case, one proton of stark material corresponds to 2 millimetres and one proton from the product corresponds to 38 millimetres. Calculating the ratio as a percentage, you take 38 divided by the total, so 40, and multiply that by 100. That gives you a conversion of 95%. Looking back at the checklist, we can tick off the calculation of purity and we've now fully assigned our NMR. Thank you for listening. We hope you found this video useful and good luck interpreting your spectra.